How many want the Holy Spirit in your house? Now, I just want to, I really want you to think about this. You want the Holy Spirit in your home. Like you want it. You want the Holy Spirit in your home. I was thinking how many months ago the staff was meeting and we were talking about what we were going to preach. We were planning the month out and I think it's kind of neat in June, a month that other people, I don't know if you've heard, but other people are celebrating June. But I'm celebrating June talking about the Holy Spirit. Amen? Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is stronger than any situation that's going on in your home. So I just felt, I wanted to tell you today that I'm just believing the Holy Spirit will come into your home today in a new way. I've been praying all week that the Lord would touch this time and be with us today. Amen? Amen. So I have tons of scripture to read. I've never read this much. When I preached, I actually told Micah, Micah, you read it. I was in a church a couple weeks ago where they have somebody else read your scripture. It's so great, right? Like they're moving and they just tell it differently. I'm a little bored in my storytelling, so I got to step it up. Micah? No, he's like, not a chance, Mom. He said, don't you do that to me today. So I want you to open up to 2 Kings 4. So I tried to cut it, and maybe I'll figure out a way, but it's just the story that God's given to me. And how many know the Bible's good? Amen? The Bible is good. So let's read it together. 2 Kings 4. Well, not together. You guys did that with Pastor a couple weeks ago. Wow, it was horrible. Like, I don't know what he was thinking. Nobody was together. It, my my um, brain was like, ah, help him. Because it was like this side would say one verse, and it was, oh, it was complete chaos. And But he kind of enjoyed it. So me, not so much. So um, 2 Kings chapter 4, four verse 8. One day Elisha went to Shinnom where a wealthy woman lived who urged him to eat some food. How many know it's not hard to talk a man into eating food? So wait, I'm just kidding, men. Hold on. You'll love me by the end, I promise. So whenever he passed that way, he would turn there to eat. She said to her husband, behold now, I know this is a holy man of God who is continually, say continually, passing our way. Let us make a small room on the roof with walls and put him there a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp. So whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. One day he came there and he turned into the chamber and rested there. He said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shunammite woman. When he had called her, she stood before him, and he said, say now to her, see, you have taken all this trouble for us. What is it that I can do for you? What is it I can do for you? I felt like the Holy Spirit told me this morning he's going to do some things for you this morning. Would you have a word spoken on behalf to the king or the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. He said, then what is it to be done for her? Gehazi answered, well, she has no son and her husband is old. He said, call her. When he called her, he stood in the doorway and said to her, at this season... About this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, O oh man of God, do not lie to your servant. Another translation says, don't give me that hope. Because she longed for that. 
When the child was, had grown, he went out one day to his father among the reapers. And he said to his father, oh, my head, my head. The father said to his servant, carry him to his mother. Because how many know when a child is sick, fathers, you just say, go to your mother. <laughs> right? Go to your mother. And he had lifted him and brought him to his mother. And the child sat on her lap till noon. And then he died. He went up, she went up, and laid him on the bed of the man of God. The room that she built, she laid him on. Sorry, I shouldn't talk, lift up my eyes. I have no idea where I was. She shut the door behind him and went out, and she called to her husband and said, send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys that I may quickly go to the man of God and come back again. He said, will you go to him today? It's either new moon or Sabbath. She said, all is well. And then she saddled a donkey and she said to her servant, urge the animal on. Do not slacken the pays for me unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. I'm almost done, okay? I got a lot of scripture, I know, but this is a good story. The man of God saw her coming and Gehazi said to his servant, look, there is a Shunammite. Run at her once and say to her, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? And she answered, it is well. Was it well? Not in the natural. It was not well. But it was well. She came to the mountain to the man of God, and she took hold of his feet. And Gehazi came to her and pushed her away. But the man of God said, leave her alone. She is in bitter distress. And the Lord has hidden it from me, and he has not told me. Then he said, did I, she said, did I not ask for a son? Did you deceive me? Tie up the garment and take my staff in your hand. If you meet anyway, anyone, do not greet him. If anyone greets you, do not reply. Lay my staff on the face of the child. And the mother of the child says, as the Lord lives, you will live your, leave, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Gehazi went. Did I read this already? I'm going to skip. I think I read that. When Elisha came to the house, he saw the child lying on the bed. He went in and he shut the door behind two of them and prayed to the Lord. He went up and he laid on the child mouth on mouth. Say mouth on mouth. Eyes on eyes. Say eyes on eyes. And hands on hands. He stretched himself. And the flesh of the child became warm. Then he got up and he walked back and forth in the house. And went up and stretched upon him. The child sneezed seven times. The child opened his eyes. God, help our eyes to open today that the spirit of the Lord can come into our house and things that look like they're gone will come back to life. God, open our eyes today. Amen. Amen. Will you look at about three people and say, today's going to be a good day. You know, there is a price to have the anointing in your house. There's a price. There's a price to have the Holy Spirit in your house. 
You know, I, I think about this. She built a room. She built it. It wasn't there. She saw a need and she wanted that man of God, that spirit in her house. So she built a room. Do you know that that costs money? That costs time. That costs plans. And she built a room so that he could stay in her house. There's something about welcoming the Holy Spirit to your, your house. Amen? How many of you would say, I have welcomed the Holy Spirit into my house? She built a room. She saw a need, and she said, I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to build a room. And she built the room where the prophet could come and stay. It wasn't a temporary place. It wasn't a place on the couch. She built, well, they, well she probably didn't. If she was like Darcy, not so much. But she had it built, Right? That was a joke. It's okay. You can laugh at that. It's okay. Um, she built something so that he could come. God help our families in 2024 to build something for the Holy Spirit to come into. If you build it, like that old movie said, it will come. I'm telling you, if you build a spot for the Holy Spirit, he will come into your house. I want him in my house. Pastor and I have built space in our room that the Holy Spirit will be in our house. And I know that so many of you have too. I love that you know that she put a lamp, she put a bed. It wasn't just a little spot. She prepared it for exactly what he would need. There were more than enough things for him. Not just food. She wanted it to be set up for the Holy Spirit, for the prophet. Everything that he would need would be there. I want him in my house. Do you want him in your house? You want him in your house. Build a room for him. Build space for him. I love that, that he came and he said, what's your need? Like, what do you need? I want to do something for you. You've done something for me. What do you need? What can I do for you? And she says, oh, nothing. Like, I don't need anything. Did she need something? Did she want something? Yes. But she said, oh, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm, no, I, I just, she didn't do it to get something. But you know, when you do something for the Lord, I promise you, he will do something for you. When you make time for Sunday and you come to church and you're here and you're, you're building a room for Jesus, I'm telling you, he's going to do something for you. And all of a sudden, his servant says, well, she, she doesn't have a son. I thought maybe Paul this morning when he said, my, my first daughter, I wasn't sure if he was telling us some news or, <laughs> go Paul, like, Oh, no. Okay. Sorry. That wasn't the spirit. I wasn't sure. But so is that your only girl for? That's it, he says. There was a need, and God met the need. God cares about your needs. He sees the needs even when you don't tell the need. He sees it. He knows it. He knows when you came in today and you went in your aisle and you smiled and somebody said, how's your week? Great. He knew that you had a need inside. You know, I saw a person uh, a little bit ago, and I won't say how long in case they're watching ever online. Glory. Glory. And uh, I hadn't seen this person for over 10 years, like 10 years. And I saw this person, and I am telling you, I, got, I am not lying, 10 minutes of garbage from this person. 10 minutes of her husband, oh, doesn't like her husband. Bad. Child, can't even stand her child. Um, her job, 
hates it, hates it. I mean, 10 minutes, I, I was stuck. I was right there. I, 10 minutes of my time where my face was... <sighs> 10 minutes of waste. I wanted to say, are you kidding me? At the end of 10 minutes, she said, how are you? I'm like, I'm great. Thank you. We're wonderful. Hallelujah. I'm thinking, wow. Have you ever been around somebody that shares a little bit too much information? I always said, Lord, let it be another 30 years before I see that person. 30, Jesus. I got in my car and I said, oh my goodness. I called my husband. I'm like, wow. Um, 10 years, 10 minutes. But you know, she wasn't like that. Her spirit didn't have to tell all the bad things because in her heart, she had already prepared a room and she was okay. No matter what was going on, she was okay. And God blessed her with a son, something she wanted. And then a few years later, you have them. They're out um, working, and he's with his dad working. And all of a sudden, just all of a sudden, he got sick. It, it wasn't a long process. Got sick, and he said, go to, go to mom. And mom takes him, and she's rocking him. And just a few hours later, the life left his body. And you think of this moment as a mother is sitting there holding her baby. What do you do when you're at a storm? What do you do when you actually don't even know what to do? What do you do when it looks like there's such crisis and there's no hope? Do you know what she did? She took her son and laid him on the prophet's bed. I'm telling you, some of you, you need to take your stuff. Nobody has stuff? Oh, I know some of your stuff. You need to take your stuff and put it on the prophet's bed. You got to say, I can't do it. I can't change it. But I know somebody that can change it. I know somebody that can take care of it, even though it looks like it's not going to change. My God can change it. My, can you just say that with me? My God can change it. I love that all of a sudden you have this woman and she says, get me a donkey. And it's actually 20 miles where she went on a donkey. How many of you have ridden a donkey? Andrea. Anybody else? Oh, you've ridden a donkey. Oh, raise your hand. This is like, we got some really crazy people in here. You've ridden, <laughs> why would you ride a donkey? Like, it's fun. Okay, I'll be over this week, and we'll try it out. We all know my horse experience wasn't so good, so maybe I'll try a donkey. I don't know. No, there worse. Yeah, okay. So she rode, uh, then I'm not coming even near your house. I am a, I'm not even going. I'm just staying at the playground with Axel. That's it. So all of a sudden, she's riding 20 miles. And she gets to Jesus, gets to the prophet, gets to the man that knows God. 20 miles. They say it took four to six hours. What do you think she was thinking on those four to six hours? I think she was thinking about all the miracles that she's heard about. I think she was saying, God, you're, you've done it before. You can do it again. I think she was saying, you've got something that you're going to change. I'm giving it to you. How many of you have got something that you need to change? Like in your life, there's something. Come on. That, that Jesus needs to change. 
And all of a sudden, she gets to the prophet, and he says, I'll send my servant. And she says, no, I need you. I need you. And he comes, and he walks up the stairs, and he goes in, and I love this. He shuts the door. Some of you just need to shut the door. <laughs> he went in that room and he shut the door. He shut the door to the chaos. I think he shut the door to the crying. I think he shut the door to all the different situations. And he was in that room. Do you know that's the room that was prepared for him? You know, that room was prepared for him, and he's right there, and he shuts the door. How many of you would say there are a few things I need to shut the door on? There are a few friendships that you need to get rid of. You need to shut the door. There are a few websites or, or Google on your phone. You need to shut the door. Some of you need to take care of some memories that keep popping up and they're not of God, and you need to shut the door. You need to shut the door. You just need to walk in that room and shut the door on everything else. I love that he laid, and it was mouth on mouth, eyes on eyes, and hands on hands. Do you know that it's really important what you say? It's really important what comes out of your mouth. It's really important what you speak. It's really important what you see. It's really important what you touch. It's really important, and you have him laying there, and then all of a sudden... He feels warmth, but he's not alive, but he feels some stuff coming back. And I love that he just gets up and he takes a walk. You guys are not feeling this this morning with me, but I'm telling you moms and dads and grandparents and teenagers and college students, sometimes you'll pray for something and it won't be finished, but you got to get up and you got to take a walk. And you got to say, okay, God, I can't do it, but you can do it. I see a little bit of life, but it's not over. I need you to do it. And you got to take a little bit of time to walk and pray. God helped Charleston Church to take a time to walk and pray. Take time to say, okay, my son isn't doing what he should be doing, but I know what you, what you called him to do. I'm going to take some time to walk and pray. My marriage is not good. Mine is personally, but maybe some of you, mine's great. I promise you, I can't wait till he comes home, okay? I promise. I told him last night, I hate it. And he's like, we got to get a dog. We got to get a puppy or something. Now, this is like, something's wrong with you. Um, so I can't wait. I miss him. So, but some of your marriages are not good. You need to go in a room, you need to shut the door, you need to pray, and you got to walk it out, and you got to say, God, come in and do what I can't do. And he can do it. He can do it. My God does miracles. He does signs, and he does wonders. You know, this week, I believe it was this week, I don't know what happened to Wayne this morning and Deborah, but they're in the last row this morning. What's up with that? Did you get here late? Did you, like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. So anyway, we'll, he, we'll talk to you this week. Maybe we could set a meeting up with Pastor Paul. And, um, and this week he was at the food pantry, and he was working there, our food pantry that we feed families, that something that we built to change and help the community. Amen. 
And he was at the food pantry this week, and a, a gentleman, I hope I get this correct, Wayne, um, but you're so far away that it would take you a very long time to get here. So um, my husband always teases him. It is really fun. Yeah. So this man came up and said, do you remember me? You prayed for my wife, right? You pray, of course, I was just seeing if he was paying attention. You prayed for me. I had cancer. He came to the food pantry, went through the line, talked to Wayne, and Wade prayed with him. And he said, I came to tell you that I am cancer free. I am cancer free. said the doctors did the test three times because they didn't believe it. <laughs> Five times. Boy, you are really correcting my story. <laughs> Five times. I should have wrote it down. I read it this morning, and I should have wrote it down. Five times because he said, this can't be. Five times. But hallelujah, God still touches, not just in this church. That's why we need to be filled with the Spirit so we can go help people to help them build a room, to help them shut the door, to help them to have a new life cancer free and they said wait they said you really got power and he said no it's my Jesus I'm telling you Jesus has power and you know there are people all through the week that will come in contact with you that need to know about Jesus they need, I, I was praying this week and I was thinking, God help our church, not just on Sunday, but Monday through Saturday to speak into people's lives. It's not just about Sunday. It's so important. The Bible says that this is God's day. Keep the Sabbath day holy. But I'm telling you, there's a whole people that you see every week that need Jesus. And don't be so busy that you don't open the door for some and help them shut it on sin. God, help us to look for that and walk in that. I'm telling you, there's something about it. He shut the door. He shut the door. He shut the door. Let's shut the door on things that we shouldn't do. Let's shut the door. Let's shut the door. And let's walk and praise him. Let's walk and ask the Holy Spirit to come in and do things that we cannot do. So many times in in our home and in our life, you know, we lived just the same life, right? We get up and we are the, we may be up here, but we're, we're the same and we go through things and many times we would get up and there would be things going on and we would have to shut the door and we would have to pray and we would have to ask the Holy Spirit, what do I do? Because I don't know what to do. And he would always do it. He would show us what to do. I pray that some of you today will build that room. I pray that some of you today will say, it is well, no matter what's going on, you'll know where your faith stands, and you're going to say, it is well. I think as, as all the musicians come on up, I think when she was making that room and preparing that room, how I don't believe that she ever would have thought that that bed that she made for the prophet is where she made room for a miracle. There was a miracle in that house because she prepared that house. I think of the story of Zacchaeus. 
You know, he hadn't prepared a room at his house. He didn't know God. He actually wasn't even a good man. He actually was a crook. But he heard about this man named Jesus. He heard about this man that loved people and did miracles. Zacchaeus went to see. He heard that Jesus was passing by. He heard that Jesus was passing by. I thought just like the prophet passed by. Later on, Jesus passed, was passing by. And Zacchaeus went to this place to see Jesus, and he, and he couldn't see him. So he climbed a tree just to get a glimpse of this man. This man that could take care of any need. This man that would do miracles, that opened blind eyes, that healed people, that people would go and touch his garment and they would be totally restored. He went on this up in this tree just to get a glimpse of Jesus. I love that Jesus just went to him. And he said, Zacchaeus, I want to come to your house today. Can I tell you today, if you don't know Jesus, he wants to come to your house today. He wants to come in and he wants to change your house. Maybe you say, I haven't prepared a room. I haven't done that. But I'm telling you today, he wants to come to your house to change your house. He wants to come in and change your house. Will you just stand with me today and, and nobody leaving, please? Jesus wants to come and meet your needs today. He wants to help you. He wants to restore you. He wants to fill you. Yeah, I was praying this week and I felt very strong that there was a parent here and you've prayed and prayed and, and you don't even know what else to do actually. You've kind of gone to the place where you've prayed and you said, God, change it. Holy Spirit just told me to tell you, you keep walking and you keep praying. You keep walking and you keep praying. And that boy will come back in that room and have an experience with the Holy Spirit. I know it. I know it. I've seen it, Pastor Troy. I've seen him come in and do miracles over and over and over and over again. I've seen him come in and touch some of you. And he's not done. How many of you would say you want to prepare a room? Will you just raise your hand for a second? You want him in your house. You want him in your house. You want him to help you. You want him to give you decisions. You want him to show you the next step. I'm telling you, invite him to your room and he'll come in and change it. He'll come in and he'll change it. He'll change it. Can you just raise your hands right now and say, Holy Spirit, I need you in my house. I want you in my house. I want you to help the areas that need help. I want you to come in and I want you to make the crooked road straight. I want you to come in. I want you to do some healing in my life. I want you to come in, Holy Spirit, and I want you to have your way. I'm going to shut some doors. 
hallelujah. I'm going to shut some doors. I'm going to say it is well because I know you and it will be well. It will be well. Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes you got to tell yourself it's going to be well. My family's going to come together. He's going to help the decisions I need. He's going to be right there. You know what we're doing with Charleston Academy? Is we're just building a room. We're just building a room. We're just building a room so that we can tell children who they are in Jesus that they can be successful in everything that they do, that their lies that the enemy wants to tell them will not happen to our children because we're building a room. We're building a room. We're building a room. We're building a room. Lord just told me to do this altar call, so I'm just going to do what he tells me to do. If you want to build a room, I want you to come close to me right at the altar. I want you to come right in, and I'm praying for every person today that the Holy Spirit will come into your house. So if you want the Holy Spirit in your room, I want you to come down to the altar and we're going to pray that the Holy Spirit and fire will come into your house and help your house. If you want him into your house, I want you to come on down right now. Hallelujah. 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 Let us experience. 